At your house, if the air conditioner or the furnace went out, yeah. how capable would you be with your family background of fixing those I problems? I can light a pilot light, but I'm always a little nervous I'm going to blow something up. But, <laughs> but if it was really an emergency situation, I could probably get the pilot light lit. <laughs> I can read a thermostat. <laughs> Other than that, I'm, but I am mechanical, very mechanical. Well, I had read that your dad was, was quite a successful businessman. Mm -hmm. uh, well, what did he teach you about the business end uh, of Hollywood when you went into the entertainment business? Did, did you don't want to even know the stuff <laughs> my dad said to me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, please, please do tell. <laughs> you know, you know the thing that my my father really hammered into me, but that was from when I started work when I entered the workforce at fourteen was be the best at what you're, whatever you're doing. You know, when I was a box girl, I was the best box girl there was. And I stocked those shelves and night straight lines. And, and um, it's a work ethic, really, you know, that's carried me through all of my different jobs. Back in your days as a, a supermarket cashier, uh, if a guy wanted to flirt with you, he, he only had so much time in the line. Mm. Uh, did you usually hear the same lines over and over again? And how good did you get at uh, deflecting guys flirting with you? Oh, man. Um, well, actually, I, I worked at a, near a marine base. So <laughs> it was an interesting combination because it was the only thing really in the area was down the road was Leisure World, and on the other down the road was this marine base. So we sort of got the two extremes there. Probably the men from Leisure World flirted with me more than the Marines. but. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. That's been a long time ago. Um, I, you know, I'm pretty oblivious to that. You kind of have to drop a house on me for me to know that I'm being picked up on. <laughs>、right. I have a, a question about stepping stones in your career. I don't mean to embarrass you, but when you were Miss Orange County,、mm -hmm. was that one of the more surreal years of your life? And what were your official duties? My official duties? I had none. I had no official duties at all. Didn't get to open supermarkets、no. or jack in the boxes or anything?、Oh. No, I don't think I could have really handled that. <laughs> didn't you meet your, your first agent during that, or didn't you get your first, your first breaks? I met、um, actually one of the judges introduced me to my first agent. No, one of, the,、oh, that's right. one of the judges was a commercial agent, yeah, and I signed with them. And it was at that time called Commercials Unlimited, and I don't know. Actually, they're st they are still around because I ran into the woman who owns it recently.、Yeah, so, what kind of products did they have you hawking? You know, I was really bad at commercials. I,、um, I didn't really get that many. I did a Ford truck commercial, I did、uh, a Japanese Max Factor commercial, and I did a Jovan Musk commercial that I don't think ever ran.、Oh, I wanted to ask you, I was watching a rerun a while back of Fantasy Island. Oh, my I, goodness. Well, was that you and Etika? I wasn't、me. sure.、Oh, I、okay. did two episodes、oh. of Fantasy Island. <laughs> Which one did you see? Was it The Island of Lost Women or was it. There was another one where I was a fantasy of、What? someone. Would you say that was a significant learning experience for you, that film? Since it was、like、a follow up to、like、a very. Successful film, do you feel like a lot of pressure with that movie? I did. Yeah, I guess the one thing that I learned through that film was not to buy into the hype of things. But I sort of knew that going into it. I don't know how, but I did. When you go out in public, do people sometimes think that you just look like somebody who looks like Michelle Pfeiffer? Sometimes, or sometimes they think I'm somebody they went to high school、okay. with.、Um, and sometimes I can actually fool them into thinking that, yeah, I, I know, I, I hear that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> When you're shooting on the streets of New York, I notice New Yorkers can sometimes be a little bit more. Boisterous than、mm -hmm. uh, some people.、Uh, what kind of comments were you hearing, and who was getting the bigger reaction, you or、uh, Mr. Clooney? Oh, I don't know at all. It's so, sort of this big, it's kind of very loud all the time there. I don't know. You know, you'd be doing a take, and you'd hear in the middle of the take, Yo, Michelle! <laughs>
you know, they don't, they don't, they just don't understand. <laughs> In the scenes that you were being towed around in the taxi cab, I mean, there was a lot of downtime. What kind of stories did you and uh, George trade? Well, I'm not a great storyteller. George just tells stories about everything. Sometimes he tells the same story over and over again. <laughs> um, but mostly he would torment the children and um, get them all riled up and, you know, teach them bad words. And, and, um, and then, you know, and then he just couldn't understand, you know, why they were so out of control when it came time to shoot. <laughs> you know, I'd say, George, you can't do that. Um, but, yeah, mostly it was that, stirring up trouble with the kids. We were talking about how people argue in a relationship. And in this movie, there's, there's quite a bit of fighting yeah. and yelling. You know, not, not to get too personal, but in real life, are you a yeller? Are you a, a a quiet discusser? Both. I mean, I'm I'm because I think because I don't really like confrontation. I sort of I let things simmer maybe a little too long, and then maybe once every few years I'll blow a gasket. <laughs> when it blows, and is I it can, and really it, and bad? It, it blows. Yeah, when it goes. <laughs> How impressed were your kids that you were doing this? Were they expecting action figures at the end of the day when you came home? They, they had no idea what I was doing, but, what, what, but my poor children. You know, the song is really hard to sing. It was really hard for me to sing, and I was nervous. And I had to just, and, I, and my voice coach said, you have to just sing in front of people. You just have to get over singing in front of people. So she said, sing in, so she made me bring in my children. And I, I know, but they were sitting there and they were really little and I'm belting out this song, you know, and they, right at, can we go now? But um, they, they don't really know what I did. They know that I sang a song and they've heard the music. But they don't really know. Well, how do they react? I mean, just one, one, one last question about your kids. How do they react if they see mom on TV, on a commercial or on a movie? Do they have any inkling about what you do for a living? Claudia is getting to where she's getting it, um, but they don't. She's only seen one movie that I've been in. That was One Fine Day, and uh, I don't think it really, you know, benefits them really in any way to see my work. Okay. And, and one last question: There's a great story about Yul Brenner being on a, on location, or when he would tour with the play. How to make his surroundings look for, more familiar, he would bring paintings and furniture with them to decorate his mm -hmm. hotel rooms. When you're on location, what kinds of things do you ask for to... I uh, used to bring everything, trunk loads of things, and I, I ju now I just don't do that anymore. It um, doesn't really matter to me, but it used to be a big deal with me to sort of create my environment where I was, but I think now that I you know, bring my kids with me, that sort of takes care of it. I mean, once the toys are out, you're home. <laughs>